It's Nobel Week, the time when this year's prize winners gather in Stockholm to receive their awards. Nobel laureate Svetlana Alekseevich was awarded last year for her writing about human suffering through the testimonies of witnesses. She's been highly praised for her oral history of the Chernobyl disaster. The Belarusian author and journalist recently traveled to Fukushima to meet people affected by the nuclear disaster there. NHK World's Misato Kosuge reports. Alekseevich was invited to speak at a university in Tokyo. It may be impossible to stop nuclear power plants right away, but it's important to consider what you can and should do. Alekseevich's books are written collages of testimonies by ordinary people. Her book, Chernobyl Prayer, a Chronicle of the Future, published in 1997, is representative of her work. It's a collection of statements from the victims of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster 30 years ago in the former Soviet Union. About a quarter of the land in Alekseevich's home country of Belarus was contaminated and seriously damaged by radioactive material. Even now, many former residents are not allowed to return to their hometowns. Alekseevich spent more than 10 years interviewing over 300 people, sometimes on camera. In the last few days, whenever I lifted my husband's body, his skin would peel off and stick to my hand. She then wrote about their deep shock and continual sadness. The Nobel Prize in Literature for 2015 is awarded to the Belarusian writer Svetlana Alekseevich. Last year, Alekseevich won the Nobel Prize in Literature for what the committee called Polyphonic Writings, a Monument to Suffering and Courage in No Time. I try to listen to people no one sees or hears. There is much more power in their emotions than in economic or medical data. So I think it's important to remember their lives. Alekseevich came to Japan to hear what people in Fukushima Prefecture have to say. She visited temporary housing and listened to residents' stories. <laughs> Do you remember when the accident took place? Oh, I couldn't forget it if I tried. She met with a former resident of Itate village. The town is still under an evacuation order. I was a dairy farmer in Itate. But now I'm unemployed. Before the earthquake, Kenichi Hasegawa had about 50 cows. He was living with seven members of his family, spanning four generations. Asegawa drove Alekseevich to his former home. It's still empty. After the accident, all of his cows had to be put down or let go. Unable to continue dairy farming due to radiation, Hasegawa decided to demolish the cow shed. His family is now scattered. Wasn't it difficult to leave home? Yes, it was. We can't live the way we did before the accident because of the radiation. Government officials say the evacuation order on Itate will be lifted next March. But Hasegawa is anxious about the future. They say we will be able to return home. But they haven't mentioned their plans for the village after that. My children won't be returning.
In Fukushima, I saw the exact same situation I'd seen in Chernobyl. The destroyed homes, the empty villages and cities, the victims' despair, they're all the same. In both countries, governments rushed to develop new technology, but they weren't able to fulfill their responsibilities. They were irresponsible toward the ordinary people. Alekshevich was also told a story of a dairy farmer who committed suicide. A close friend of the farmer took her to the place where he died. He left a note saying, I wish there'd been no nuclear power plants here. <laughs> Alekshevich has spent years focusing on the suffering of ordinary people and making their voices heard. Visiting the two disaster-stricken regions has renewed her sense of determination. No one completely understands the horror of nuclear power. Literature should communicate it, and so should philosophers. It's not a job for politicians alone. In other words, we need to look at what happened in Chernobyl and Fukushima and put them together to form new knowledge. I saw the future, not the past. And we need to work on that future. It has been 30 years since the nuclear disaster in Chernobyl and five years since the one in Fukushima. The future depends on never letting the voices of the ordinary people go unheard. That's the message from Nobel laureate Svetlana Alekshevich. Misato Kosuge, NHK World.